first time in decades that out-of-state mining interests have started to express an interest in open pit mining in the state of Maine. And it's not just in Maine, we're also seeing it in Alaska, Michigan, Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota. And over the next 18 months, the Department of Environmental Protection will be developing new rules, uh, possibly weaker rules, a lower threshold of protection for open pit mining in the state of Maine. NRCM was involved in creating the existing protective rules back in 1991, and mining interests now claim that those are too strict. So their effort right now is to weaken these rules, and so the, the, the challenge we're facing is to, uh, to keep those rules as strong as possible. And I'll be giving you some background about the mining issue. It's fairly new to the state of Maine, so most environmental advocates haven't really been paying attention to, to what the real world risks are of, of open pit mining. And uh, particularly I'll focus on many of the water quality issues. So this is an open pit mine. This, uh, this hole right here was at the Callahan mine, um, which uh, was a mine in the state of Maine back in the early 70s. It stopped operating in 1972. So uh, the focus right now is on Bald Mountain. It's in Aroostook County. Uh, I've drawn a red circle around the site where the Bald Mountain's uh, um, deposit is located. Uh, here's a picture of it. It's land owned by J.D. Irving. J.D. Irving is interested in extracting copper, zinc, gold, and silver, uh, which exist in that mountain uh, at very low concentrations. Uh, companies have known about this deposit for 40 years or so. Uh, there's never been a strong interest in, in doing a mine operation there, mostly because uh, the commodity prices weren't high enough, but with copper prices now at uh, particularly high levels, there seems to be a fairly significant interest. The important thing in this image is all of those yellow blobs are uh, sulfur volcanic geologic deposits that have fairly high concentrations, or mineable concentrations of of uh, zinc, copper, uh, and other metals. So if we lower the regulations, weaken the rules for Bald Mountain, it will uh, possibly open up all these other areas for open pit mining as well. And there's many other places beyond what is on this map that may be uh, affected. This picture of Bald Mountain, if in fact it was an open pit mine, the intention would be to level the mountain and create a huge pit. That's what open pit mining is. There is somewhat of a history for, open, for, for mining in the state of Maine. As I mentioned earlier, the Callahan mine in Ar Harborside, uh, uh, they extract about 5 million tons of, of uh, non-ore bearing waste rock. I'll get into the you know, uh, details of that in a, in a bit. 800,000 tons of ore were removed. Cleanup cost was $23 million, uh, $23 million to the taxpayers. It was 200 truckloads of contaminated waste that were taken off site. This map from the, from the Maine Geological Survey shows areas that uh, uh, um, exploration activities have identified as the most likely near-term locations for open pit mining. So here's Bald Mountain. There's also a place called Mount Chase, uh, Alder Pond, Ledge Ridge. This was the Katahdin Iron Works, which was a, an iron, iron ore mine back in the late 1800s. Two, uh, some, there's some blue uh, dots here, which are the former mines that have been pursued, including the Callahan mine. There was also a mine in Blue Hill, the, the Care American mine. Uh, that one also left quite a mess. There was about a, a $10 million cleanup activity that happened at that mine. And uh, there was about a million tons of ore extracted. Uh, but in that case, it was uh, through underground mining. Right now, most mining in the United States is open pit mining. So what is sulfide mining? This is, these are sulfide deposits. Uh, it's important for water quality purposes to understand the significance here. The, the, um, the, the minerals of interest are locked into sulfide bearing ore that's underground. As long as it stays underground, it's not releasing any significant uh, 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 chemicals or metals of concern to the public. But once you release it, once you expose it to water and air, uh, the sulfur turns into sulfuric acid, which is the same thing that's in uh, car batteries. And it's a very powerful acid that also leaches heavy metals out of rock. So cadmium, chromium, 
lead, mercury, arsenic, all are released by the, the acid. As I mentioned, 97% of all metals in the United States are now mined through open pit mines. It's cheaper for the companies to get at them through big open pits as opposed to, to mining shafts. And they're trying to get at uh, these deposits that might be of commercial grade. A mining operation is mostly about uh, moving huge volumes of rock. So there's a waste rock overlay uh, that usually has no ore in it. And that might be uh, as much volume as, as down below the, the, the rock that you have to get to to try to, to, try to um, extract a concentrate of, of minerals. In, in, this, uh, in, in this environment in the state of Maine, we're talking about 1 to 2 percent concentration of these, of these uh, um, metals. They create a concentrate, uh, so that little yellow box is all the, of the uh, commercially viable um, uh, concentrate that would be extracted uh, on site, turned into a, a concentrate, and then it would be shipped to a smelter. And those are usually offshore, so the smelters are, are not even usually US based. 98% of the tailings becomes waste, and then all of everything up above comes waste. So you might have 198 tons of waste rock for two tons of, of concentrate. And you create huge piles of rock. So if you leveled Bald Mountain, you would be generating massive rock piles that need to be moved around, literally creating new landforms on the landscape of huge piles of rock. And uh, much of what mining is about is blowing up the, the rock and moving it so that you can get down and excavate uh, some of the rock that might have uh, the ore that you're looking for. So we're talking about hundreds of millions of tons of waste rock that are created through the process of an open pit mine. This is a, uh, a waste rock pile in British Columbia at the Mount Poli mine. So then you've got to, you know, once, the, once you've gotten to the ore, you, you grind it up down to really fine particles because you then uh, want to extract the minerals and turn it into a concentrate. And through that process, you're adding water and you're creating um, a slurry of, of, of tailings which um, don't have the, the ore in them. So you need to dispose of that somewhere. And you usually build an impoundment and you create a, a, a uh, impoundment um, uh, pond to, to hold that slurry. And this can be very toxic. So it, this. You know, if what's being dumped out into the slurry pond, there's the impoundment bank behind it. Uh, often they'll put a layer of water on top of it to slow down the, the conversion of, of the sulfur-bearing rock into sulfuric acid. And this is what open pit mines look like, quite, very, quite substantial scars on the landscape. And this is what Maine now has to potentially worry about uh, coming to this state. Now here's the big water quality problem. As I mentioned, these sulfur, uh, these sulfide deposits uh, are safe as long as they're locked underground. As you start exposing them for the first time in, in the history of, of, of these deposits to water and air and bacteria, they turn into sulfuric acid. And that sulfuric acid becomes acid mine drainage. And all the mines in the, around the world that, that are uh, uh, sulfide-based ore uh, deposits release what's called acid mine drainage. And this is, ex this is lethal to aquatic uh, uh, organisms. So there are examples all over the planet of, of uh, on the left here, you, this is orange because it's a iron uh, sulfide-bearing uh, rock, and so it turns orange, but in many cases you can't tell the, the, by a, a, a signal color that uh, there's acid mine drainage, but if you test the water, the pH is extremely low, the acid is super high, and it will be uh, um, at a level that's toxic to fish in particular, but it also kills benthic organisms and just about everything in the stream. And the acid um, and the toxics uh, um, uh, have all sorts of impacts on, on aquatic life. So. Uh, it's not just the acidity that, that creates a, a lethal impact, but, but the heavy metals 
can interfere with their gills, their ability to breathe, their, their sense of smell, their ability to avoid predators, and it's a, it's a very severe problem that occurs anytime you've got sulfide mining. Now, um, mining companies will always say, well, well, we can take care of that, and we'll, we'll treat the pollution, and there won't be any pollution leaving the site. And they always predict, I mean, 100% they predict that there won't be any pollution leaving the site. Um, but uh, this is a really good study. It's online, a mining truth report. It's done by an advocacy group in Minnesota where they're facing a serious mining threat. And their analysis shows that companies and state agencies almost always predict there's going to be no pollution. In the permits that they bring forward, in the, perm in the application process, they say there's not going to be any problems uh, created by it. Um, but mining companies are unable to point to a single sulfide mine that has been developed, operated, and closed without producing polluted drainage in the form of acid mine drainage. And these problems are, are hitting not just old mines, but the newest of mines. So even so-called state-of-the-art mining operations are, be, are, are showing significant acid mine drainage leaving the site. This is the challenge that we face in the state of Maine. In the, in the green and blue areas of this map are the, are the, are the best eastern brook trout habitat of the entire range of this fish. And the red and brown are those areas where uh, brook trout habitat's been destroyed uh, by a broad range of threats to, uh, caused by, by uh, uh, roads and runoff and pollution, not just mining, but also you know, a broad range of, of the, you know, warming of the water as a lack of, of uh, riparian zone. So the very best most intact brook trout habitat, which is kind of an indicator of just the health of the ecosystem in general, is in Maine, and Bald Mountain is like right in the middle of this. So many of these sulfide deposits are right in an area that right now is prized for its intact habitat. So here, I mean, this is a problem for Maine, but, you know, because the, the state of Maine actually um, is a destination for fly fishermen, for people who are trying to achieve uh, nature-based tourism. Um, in places that have long been lost in other parts of the, of the northeastern United States and around the world. So this is what, what the Arista County uh, Office of Tourism says about this area. Quote, Aroostook is one of the last strongholds in the northeastern United States for the native brook trout, and the Fish River chain of lakes is the last remaining cold water fishery in the state of Maine, free of any invasive warm water or exotic species of fish. Now, that's important because the Fish River chain of lakes is exactly where Bald Mountain is located. So the orange box here shows Bald Mountain. The drainage, uh, if you blow up uh, Bald Mountain and create a big open pit mine, you, the drainage is expected to go this way uh, into the Fish River chain of lakes. Uh, and then that drains, the Fish River goes here. Uh, it goes into Portage Lake. Fish River continues here. It goes into Eagle Lake, which continues up into the St. John River. So um, the impact of a mine is not localized. When that pollution leaves, it, it can travel hundreds of miles and cause impacts uh, all along the way. Now the companies make many promises, and this was one made last week. We had a, uh, a visiting speaker in our CM's annual meeting who came from, Canada, uh, from Mining Watch Canada, and the spokesperson for J.D. Irving said, uh, we're a company that protects hundreds of miles of water course buffers, uh, we also protect deer wintering habitat. We're doing voluntary conservation efforts, etc. She said, uh, we would see bringing the same commitment and rigor that we do to mining operations. There is nothing that is comparable between protecting a deer wintering yard and managing a mining operation. For a company to suggest that just look at how we protected uh, yeah. some riparian zone along the river or a deer wintering yard and trust us is absurd. But, uh, and that's alarming, because this is a company that should know better, but the truth is J.D. Irving has no experience in mining operations. They sell oil, they cut down trees, mining is new, so they would open up a mine in the state of Maine uh, using out-of-state mining interests. Uh, there's major waste management problems associated with running a mining operation. Uh, this is an impoundment. Um, keeping that impoundment from busting is a big problem that faces mines all over the place. Uh, this up here on the upper right is a treatment facility 
uh, at a at a mine in California, I believe, that may need to operate for hundreds or thousands of years, because as long as as you have exposed sulfide uh, rock that is getting wet, it is creating acid mine drainage, and you're going to have to capture it and treat it before releasing it. So you've got a serious long-term waste management problem created by a mining operation. This is uh, a, a pit mine in, in Butte, Montana, the Berkeley Pit. Uh, in 1995, 342 snow geese uh, were killed almost instantly when they landed on the surface of this, of this pit mine. Uh, so they may try to sequester the water, uh, the polluted water, uh, the same thing has happened with tar sands impoundments up in Alberta. But, and they actually have sound signals up in Alberta trying to keep birds from landing on the water. It's so toxic. Uh, so they might try to protect it, but, but in a state as wet and just, you know, with as many storms as Maine has, uh, you can't be sure that you're going to keep that water behind the dam. Uh, the pit, as you're digging down, usually goes below the water table. The state of Maine has so much water and it's a high water table. You get water that goes into the, into the mining activity, you've got to pump that out. And so you've got to also treat that water. So you've got additional volumes of water that you're trying to treat and keep from getting into the rest of the hydrological system. A mine had lots of different components. Up in at the Bald Mountain site, they're talking about a 20 megawatt uh, biomass plant that they'll need to generate the power for the mining activity. From our experience, when you have standalone biomass plants out in the middle of the woods, the woods around it are just destroyed. Uh, that's the nearest fiber, they cut it all down, and, and so you have the additional impact to generate the power. Mines use a lot of power. So this is the big promise, you know, this is going to generate jobs, and that's why a bill made it through the last legislative session. It was substantially improved from the, from the beginning of the process, but it was still uh, pushed based on the promise of 700 jobs. And the reality is that there's big questions about the jobs that are created. Who are they for? They're generally for, for out-of-state people with experience that, um, that people in Northern Maine don't have. Uh, many of these companies don't end up paying taxes. they figured out schemes to avoid paying taxes. There's fairly significant uh, social impacts that are created on the local region whenever you have a mining operation. Most studies have shown that the, the job predictions have been inflated uh, at many of these mine sites. Uh, this was an interesting study. Contrary to long-standing assumptions, roughly half of all published findings indicate negative economic outcomes in mining communities. And there's also a boom and bust cycle, and there's also, uh, as production has gone up, the employment levels have gone down through mechanization and open pit mining. So let me focus just on the very most important parts of, of what's coming up ahead. J.D. Irving hired a rustic timber, you know, has a kind of a front group, rustic timberlands. Uh, this is the lobby team that they used in the legislature last year. They hired Pierce Atwood and a whole group of their attorneys, and Mitchell Tardy. Uh, these are two of the, 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 the most powerful hired guns you can get in the state of Maine to lobby at the state house. They spent $118,000 on direct lobbying expenses in about six weeks. This is huge money in the main state legislature. Yeah. NRCM has five people who lobby at the state house. Uh, we track more than 100 bills in a session. We're over there all the time. We spent $89,000 for the entire session uh, on across that many bills. These are other companies that are all lobby, that all were involved in lobbying for the bill. We now have a rulemaking process with very limited opportunities for public input. So they're hiring an outside contractor, and a decision will be made in the next week. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll learn about that. There will be a public hearing, we think, next summer uh, on rules that will be developed behind closed doors. Uh, that's going to be a very important time to, to mobilize the public to express concerns. And then there's probably going to be a public, there will be a public hearing in January or February of 2014. This rulemaking process will determine whether the existing safeguards for water quality will, will be weakened, whether Bald Mountain will be turned into an open pit, how many additional open pit mines will be created in the state of Maine, and what the implications will be for the, for the water quality and the environment for the state of Maine. And as with all these issues, we'll need your help through the process, uh, because uh, we believe we could win on this if the people of Maine understand the risks involved. 
but it's gonna, this is a new enough issue that part of our challenge is just getting the word out of how serious this risk would be for everything that we care about in the state of Maine. Thank you.